Hi, I'm Susie Larson. Thank you for listening to Susie Larson Live. Faith Radio podcasts are only possible because of your support. So thanks for giving, and thanks for sharing with a friend. It's only just a matter of... You're listening to an encore presentation of Susie Larson Live. Welcome to Suzy Larson Live. Always so honored to get to spend this time with you. In fact, I look forward to bringing you conversations every single day that hopefully inspire you in your faith walk, that deepen your understanding of God's Word, and that heightens your awareness of His very real presence in your life. Well, we've been walking through an amazing series every Tuesday, Living with the End in Mind. We've talked about heaven. We've talked about finances, funeral, faith, all those kinds of things. Well, John Eldridge joins me today, and we're going to draw from two of his amazing books. First one is All Things New, Heaven, Earth, and the Restoration of Everything You Love. If you want, you just, this book makes me feel like Jesus grabs your chin and tilts it upward, and you just feel the warmth of his presence. It puts joy and hope and perspective in your heart. And the second one is Resilient, Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times. And to me, it's such a a now word for the times in which we find ourselves. And we've got five copies of Resilient to give away today. You can text the word book to get in on the drawing, 877-933-2484. John writes this, more than anything else, how you envision your future shapes your current experience. If you knew that God is going to restore your life and everything you love any day now, if you believed a great and glorious goodness was coming to you, not in heaven out there, but right here on earth, you would have hope to see you through anything, an anchor for your soul, an unbreakable spiritual lifeline, reaching past all appearances right into the very presence of God. Isn't that good? We'll get him on in a quick moment here. Just a quick uh, reminder, just asking you to prayerfully become a radio podcast missionary. How do you do that? Well, if a show encourages you, chances are really great. It's going to encourage your friends and family too. So just click the share button when you can. As soon as the live show is over, it goes to podcast. We make it very shareable. Share it with a few friends and say, this blessed me. I hope it blesses you too. All right, let me tell you about my guest. We'll get him on the show. John Eldridge is best-selling author, counselor, and teacher. He's also president of Wild at Heart, a ministry devoted to helping people discover the heart of God, recover their own hearts in God's love, and learn to live in God's kingdom. He and his beautiful wife, Stacy, live near Colorado Springs, Colorado, and he's just one of my favorites. John, welcome back to the show. Oh, you're one of my favorites. <laughs> so good to be with you. Thank you for making time. I know you've got lots of people pulling on you, so it means the world that you give us time today. Oh, no, I'm honored, Susie. I, I love your show. I love your heart for God. Thank you, friend. Well, we love you've been on plenty of times. You know this. We start every day the same way, just making it personal. What has the Lord been impressing upon your heart these days? I think he's keeping his promise that he gave us in 1 Thessalonians 5 when he says this, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. I feel like, Susie, he's up to that in in my life and in the lives of those that I love and work with. I just see God coming to the places in me (laughs) that, that yet need him, that yet need salvation in Christ. He's coming for, I guess I would describe it wholeheartedness and holiness together. Mm, yeah, I love that. Wow, it seems like you can't really have one without the other, you know, in the redemptive sense, right. that he addresses all of that, right? Right, yeah. And it's even among mature friends of God who have walked with him for 30, 40 years, I see him bringing up um, unresolved things. You know, it might be, the need to forgive someone, it it might be a childhood wound, uh, but places within us, yeah, unsanctified things, appetites that that need his his holiness, and he it, it just feels like he's about this work in the body of Christ right now to to yeah prepare us for uh, the day that Jesus does return. Mm. 
And also even for the times in which we find ourselves, when you think about it, you know, John, it, it, you know, we can't impart what we don't possess. And as God is stirring these things up to bring healing, we are freshly in a position to help others heal. And I just, I see God moving. I sense him really, you know, just accelerating the times. And, and I, I think as we are freshly in awe of God and freshly healed of God, we have a testimony on our lips that others need to hear. And I just think it's setting it all up, really, to, for him to illuminate the darkness in the times don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate you bringing that up as well, because to navigate a moment like this one, this is a really tough moment, gang, to yeah. to live and love and, and to try and, you know, walk on, on this earth right now. And that wholeheartedness, that union with Christ, that, yeah, addressing of, of the issues within us, you're absolutely right, Susie, we need that in order to love well and live mm -hmm. well and, and yeah, have a story to tell others in this hour. Mm -hmm. Well, one of our previous interviews, you said something, uh, you said hope is not wishful thinking or holding positive thoughts. You said this, when I speak of hope, I mean the confident anticipation that goodness is coming. I mean, that just is like, I want that to settle in to those who are listening today. When John is talking about hope, it's not wishful thinking, not holding positive thoughts. It's confident anticipation that goodness is coming. Say more if you would, John. Yeah. Yeah. And let's let's add to that to clarify, there, there's a kind of two different kinds of hope. There's immediate hopes and there's ultimate hopes. You know, the immediate hopes, I hope I make this flight. I, I hope this interview goes well. You know, it's, uh, it's yeah, I hope our friends are available for dinner. You know, the day-to-day the -day hopes. And those are important things. Um, to have hope is, is a good sign that your heart is alive. Mm -hmm. And then there's ultimate hopes, the, the hope and the assurance that God will come through, the hope of our redemption, the hope that he will make all things new. And Susie, I think I, I've been a, Christian counselor for golly, almost 35 years, I see people misplacing our hopes. We misplace our hopes. We we make immediate hopes ultimate. You know, like if I don't get this job, you know, I'm I, I don't, I'm gonna despair. If you know, and and getting the job is important and God is in that, but we got to make sure that our ultimate hopes are in the right place. Because when this is Hebrews 619, we have this hope as an anchor of the soul, firm and secure. When, when we know, when we know that God will never abandon us, when we know that he is committed to us, when we know that he will make all things new, partly in this life and thoroughly any moment now in the life to in the age to come when we know that you have to know that you have to know that that your story does not end in loss there is no loss i, I have a dear friend who is in the final weeks of cancer right now and we were spending some pretty tearful moments together and and he was admitting his fear and, and we just had to go back over the story and and just say hey buddy there's no loss. Not, nothing is lost when everything of ours is in the hands of God. He does restore all things. And that's the bedrock. Like if we yeah. can, if we can live from that place, then we can navigate the day to day and go, oh, thank you, Lord, for for you know the job coming through. Or if it doesn't, my heart's okay. I'm not taken out. Hmm. Boy, that's such a good point. Misplaced hope will keep us constantly disoriented, but rightly placed hope will keep us anchored and tethered to God who won't change. That seems like an important distinction. Wow. When you, you and I have talked about this before and talked about your great book, Resilient, but when you look around and you see culture spinning out of control and so many losing sight, I mean, the enemy is really just going after the core issues of our identity, you know, and our relationships and family and those kinds of things. We need resilience. So how would you describe like a redemptive perspective of resilience? This is such good news, gang, because when you, we, you know, really, when you start talking about resilience and bounce back and tenaciousness and, you know, buoyancy, 
it can sound a little bit like you're supposed to sign up for a gym membership spiritually, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, but here's the good news. Here's the good news. Ephesians 3 begins in verse 14. It says, now here's what I pray. I pray that God would strengthen you in your inmost being by his spirit that dwells within you. Biblical resilience is not pulling yourself up. Biblical resilience is the best news in the world. It is breathed into you hmm. by the presence of God in your life. And that is, that's just such good news because most folks just don't, we don't have enough to keep pulling ourselves up or pulling our kids up or, you know, whatever is needed. But when we realize, wait a second, God, you promise to breathe or to impart or to pour into us your resilience. Oh, that's that's a whole different promise. I I could I could rejoice in that. Wow, so good. We're going to pause here. When we come back, I want to talk about the idea of, of forward, upward and onward, and forward we go, because God brings us from strength to strength, glory to glory, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. The enemy will bring us back to our past to condemn us. God may pull us back to our past to propel us forward. He may ask us to revisit part of our story that we've not resolved in light of eternity, but what we tend to do in times of transition or trouble is to want to go back to Egypt. <laughs> and, and God wants us to say, upward and onward we go. So we'll talk with John Eldridge about that, not looking at life pre-pandemic. If only I could get back to that. What do you have for me here, God? Where are you taking me now, God? Upward and onward we go. John Eldridge is my guest today. We've got a handful of copies of Resilient to give away, restoring your weary soul in these turbulent times. He's a New York Times bestselling author, and this is a fantastic book. You can text the word book to get in on the drawing, 877-933-2484. We'll be back in a minute. You know, this show is all about deeper life in Christ and powerful life on earth. I try to handpick my guests in a way that helps you cultivate an intimate, thriving walk with God that translates in how you show up on the earth. Because I'm passionate about health and the healing process, we bring doctors on the show. I'm passionate about renewing our mind. We bring a neurosurgeon on to talk about a biblical renewing of our mind, but also adding that science and faith perspective. I talk about how to open God's word and find his truth in a fresh and compelling way. Maybe someone shared a show with you, and as you've been listening, you realize you like the topics. You're brand new to this whole faith thing. Maybe you've got some questions about what it means to follow Jesus. Well, we're so honored at Faith Radio to partner with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, and we'd love to help get some of your questions answered. If you've got questions about beginning this faith journey, about starting to trust Jesus and follow him with your life, text the word FAITH to 41224. Trusting Jesus for your eternity and following him every day of your life will be the most important decision of your whole life. Steady heart that keeps on going. This is an encore presentation of Susie Larson Live. That you're having a fantastic day. Thanks for tuning in to Susie Larson Live, talking to our friend John Eldridge. He's got a couple of books that we're drawing from. He's got a lot of books, but the two we're drawing from today are All Things New, Heaven, Earth, and the Restoration of Everything You Love, and Resilient, Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times. We got a handful of copies of Resilient to give away. You can text the word book to get in on the drawing, 877. 933-2484. So, John, you heard my setup of the question before the break, how oftentimes we kind of want to go back, want to go back to Egypt because we don't like transition. I don't know who said it, but some of us prefer an, um, what is it, a known captivity to an unknown freedom. And one of the oh, things wow. you wrote, yeah, I, and you wrote this, the great alarm the scriptures are sounding is that our longing for life to be good again will be the battleground for our heart. How you shepherd this precious longing, and if you shepherd it at all, will determine your fate in this life and the life to come. This is playing out in a post-pandemic world. We only sort of want God. 
What we really want is for life to be good again. So help us get our, our perspective right, upward, onward, you know, that truly God is redeeming all things. But to really, these storms really do reveal the motivations of our heart. Oh, I, I, I'm so embarrassed by this reality. Too much chocolate, <laughs> buying stuff, watching way too much global soccer on TV. I'm just confessing my need for relief is taking me in directions that have absolutely nothing to do with the resilience of God. And, and this is the human dilemma, right? That yeah. the need for relief is okay, gang. Everybody is feeling it. Come on, just give me a break. I just want some relief. I just want life to be good. Come on. That's from God. That's okay. Where we take that, where we go looking for relief really is the battle right now. And, and Jesus tells some pretty sober stories of, about that. One of them is Lot's wife, where, you know, they're being offered this rescue out of a very dark culture and a very dark hour. But there was something in her heart that turned back. She just couldn't bear the thought of, you know, losing whatever it was, the shopping, the, the people, the security, whatever she felt attached to, I need that more than I need God. And it didn't go very well for her when she turned back. So yeah, Susie, what I'm finding for myself is a profound need for comfort, a profound need for relief, a profound need for something to look forward to. And, and what I need to do almost daily is to shepherd those longings back to Jesus mm. and then ask him, what do you have for me? It's not that God doesn't have good things for us right now, but when we you know, run off into the desert looking for water, we leave the fountain of living water to do that. And so I want to come back to Christ every day and just say, okay, Jesus, here I am again. I am so longing, you know, for, and then you can just kind of name it, what it is you're longing for and, and say, Lord, I put all that in you to begin with. You, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. You are my shepherd. And so first I love you. And then show me what you have. And okay, little anecdote on that. So Stacy and I were feeling a real need to get away this spring. And all our friends, well, not all our friends, but several friends are sending us, you know, photos from Mexico on the Wish beach. Wish you were here. <laughs> I know, it's right? killing me. I'm like, stop yeah. sending me these photos. <laughs> so we were praying about that. And every time we asked Jesus, we heard no. And I'm like, come on, Lord. I'm, I'm honestly getting mad at him. And then we get the phone call. And the phone call is from our, our dear friends. Uh, he is passing away with cancer. And they needed, they needed us to be with them. And I realized, oh, you knew that if we had booked a trip, we wouldn't be here. And here is where we want to be. Like, you know, Lord, you know what's coming and you have good things for us but what i want to do it, 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 gang is to let jesus guide me in the search for life rather than get out there and mm. try and arrange for life on my own that's so good there's so many thoughts going through my mind right now john i'm thinking about better to be in a house of mourning than a house where there's a party because you know a house of mourning is really where you're closest you're, you're to the edges of eternity where a house where there's a party it's temporary fun you're throwing caution to the wind you're forgetting about your troubles but there's something about being close to the edge of eternity, to be in a house of mourning because life comes into perspective. And he is such a good God. He will lead you beside still waters when the time is right. But when we grab for ourselves because we don't trust God, it literally is like drinking muddy water when he's got a living stream just up ahead, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This will help you folks. There's a difference between relief and restoration. Hmm. Okay. Relief and restoration. Relief is a bag of chips. Relief is a bag of donuts, right? Relief relief is binge watching Netflix. And it works for a little while. But when it's over, you don't feel restored. 
right? You don't walk away from three hours of video games feeling like a renewed person. Restoration comes as, as through our union with Christ. It comes through the, the life of God in us, the love of God in us. Restoration is what God is offering us every single day through our union, our intimacy with him. And then, yes, absolutely, the things he provides. Who knows? Maybe Stacy and I will end up, you know, we might go camping this spring or we might do something. But the point is, I keep seeking relief when what I need is restoration. Mm-hmm. Amen. I got to read this. This one's from All Things New. You said, we've been looking for the renewal all our lives. It's been calling to us through every precious memory, every moment of beauty and goodness. It is the promise whispered in every sunrise, every flower, every wonderful day of vacation, every pregnancy, the recovery of your health. The thing you're made for is the renewal of all things. God has given you a heart for his kingdom, not the wispy vagaries of a cloudy heaven, but the sharp reality of a world made new. This is such an important message. Both of these, these, you know, you could almost put these in a, in a, and a dual book. You should tell your publishers to consider that because I feel like you need resilience to really persevere and press in. And like you said, shepherd your perspective because the beauty of what he does have for us, we get glimpses of it now in the flowers, in new birth, in a worship song. And what we miss those things if we're just going after relief and not redemption, not restoration, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so good, Susie. I see the thing that makes your show so good is that you are speaking out of your personal suffering Mm -hmm. and your search for what is true. And, and what you and I have discovered is, is it's as simple as this. If there is nothing in your hope folder gang, if you kind of open up that folder in your soul, what is, what is hope? Go, well, streets of gold, harps and halos. Eh, you know, there's nothing there. Or either, or it's too weird, you know, the future, uh, it's just too weird. You're like, well, I don't know, I guess we go up to the sky or we go to some other, you know, we sing. I don't know. You can't hope for that. You can't hope for things that you don't even desire. Hmm. And so let me help you with this, friends. Easter morning, Easter morning, Jesus Christ walks out of the tomb. Now, he is now the new creation, okay? He, he, he has been resurrected, but it's still him, same body even, right? He says, hey, touch uh, Thomas, touch the scars here. It, his same personality, same wonderful guy. God is going to do for the entire universe what he did for Jesus on Easter, it's not a bait and switch. It's not that you give up all the things you love and all the people you love, and then you go away to some other, you know, weird new thing. No, 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 no. God literally says in Revelation, uh, when John sees the kingdom of God coming to the earth, he, God says, I am making everything new. And to let this in, all the miracles of Jesus, the blind see, the deaf hear. He's trying to illustrate what happens when the kingdom of God comes. Mm -hmm. And what happens is restoration. Not a bait and switch, not a weird, you know, we don't all become angels or something. It's so beautiful. And the earth is the earth does this every year, by the way, gang. Creation, you know, tells the story of God every year. Springtime, summer right? Like winter is past and things are reborn and and green and beautiful and the flowers come back. And it's almost like Eden is reborn once a year. Exactly. He's trying to show you Eden is about to return. Hmm. We're going to pause here. Amen. Somebody got to text me an amen. As John's talking, I'm thinking of John Burke's quote that most people have such a poor view of heaven that they're more excited about retirement than they are eternity. So what do you have in your hope folder? I mean, some have said, I think of heaven as a never-ending church service. So of course, you're going to look to this life to satisfy your deepest desires if you have a poor view of eternity. But what if it's a sensory explosion? What if what you smell and taste and see and hear blows your mind? And the joy and the redemption and all of these bodies and relationships healed? Put that in your hope folder. Talking to John Eldridge, more with him 
in just a moment. This is an encore presentation of Suzy Larson Live. Even in the broken parts, he holds my heart. He never fails. Thanks for tuning in to Suzy Larson Live, talking to our good friend John Eldridge. We're drawing from two of his really amazing books, Resilient, Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times, and All Things New, Heaven, Earth, and the Restoration of Everything You Love. And you talk so much about uh, just healing the heart and inner healing and really um, allowing your heart to be met by the love of God so that you can really step into all that God has for you. And in one of your books, you asked this question. I'd love for you just to unpack it a bit more. You said, your current emotional state, does it reflect your confidence that Jesus is absolute Lord of everything on earth? galaxies to governments, that is church is center stage, not the world. Oh, I love that. That church, that Christ is going to get the final word. I think somebody needed to hear that today. I sure did. I'm going to read it one more time and then have John speak to it. Your current emotional state, does it reflect your confidence that Jesus is absolute Lord of everything on earth, galaxies to governments, that his church is center stage, not the world, that Christ is going to get the final word? Wow. I just want to sit with that for a little bit. But what do you say, John? <laughs> yeah, thanks for reading it. Mm. Um, okay, gang, really important to pay attention to your emotional life. Most of us, you know, because of the pace of life, the amount of demands, we don't check in that often. And then we don't understand why we're binge eating or drinking or whatever. Like, check into your emotional life. That's what the invitation of that is. Check into your emotional life. What are you feeling? And then chase that down a little bit. Chase that down because your emotions are indications of the deeper things going on in your heart. And if you're feeling desperate, if you are feeling hopeless, if you are so angry right now, that's actually really important to pay attention to that and to follow the breadcrumb trail in to where you need Jesus, where you need Jesus. And what I'll do for myself is I'll just put it into words. I'll just say, okay, okay, I'm mad right now. At what? Like name it, John. And Or I'm so disappointed right now. Okay, okay, name it. Because as you name it, what you're uncovering are, are some of the deeper places of your heart that still need the care of God, the love of God. And then the next thing I do is say, oh, Jesus, I don't bury it. I, I don't try and hide it. I just say, oh, Lord, here it is. Like, you know, come into this, please meet me here. Come into this emotion and come into what's under it, Lord the unhealed places in my heart, or maybe they're just places that have totally lost perspective because of disappointment. Come into this, Lord Jesus. Come into this. Breathe your life into, into this part of me. I need you here. I need you here because, oh, Leanne Payne was such a great healer of the soul. And her simple line was, the soul is healed through union with Christ. The soul is healed through union with Christ. And there are places in us yet that are not experiencing the comfort, the truth, the, the, the hope of the presence of Jesus there. So locate the emotion, follow the breadcrumb trail in to, to you know, where your heart needs care, and then invite Jesus right into that very place. So practical and beautiful. Thank you for that. You know, Scripture says that we we don't know the date of Christ's return, but it also says it shouldn't take believers unaware. That's okay. We may not know the date, but we're clearly called to discern the times. How do you discern the times in which we find ourselves? Okay. What you just said is a really big idea. So let's come back to that for a second. I think I think most Christians, or most, or just listeners to your show, I think most people believe we don't know, we can't know, so don't pay attention. 
Exactly. And, but that's actually that's actually not what scripture says. Mm -hmm. Scripture scripture says that Jesus in Matthew 24, he gives a whole series of what he called signs. And he says, just as you know, when you see the fig tree, you know, coming leafing out in the spring, you know that summer is near. He says, So when you see these things happening, you know my return is near. Now, why would Jesus give us a whole bunch of signs if, if there was no chance of of paying attention? right? If it's all going to be surprised. And then Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, he says, but you are not in the darkness and you will not be surprised by the return of the Lord. Okay. So let's just take one of those signs because this is really fun and really hopeful. So in Matthew 24, 13, 14, Jesus says, and this gospel of the kingdom must reach all people groups and then I'll come back, okay? And you're like, well, that's a pretty, like, that's a very tangible thing, you know? It's not freaky deaky. It's not the world collapsing into chaos. Like, that. that's a very simple, straightforward thing. The gospel of salvation in Christ needs to reach all people groups, and then the end will come. And here's what is so thrilling, gang. So as of about... Okay, I'm trying to get some of my dates right. Let's let's say five years ago. As so of about five years ago, there were still about a thousand people groups, maybe less, maybe about 800 people groups yet to be reached. Do you know how many people groups are yet to be reached today, Susie? No, I don't. Less than 100. Wow. Right? Because of missions, because of funding, and because of technology. So as much as I don't like technology, one of the things it's done, like Bible translations are coming out really fast now. And, and every people group will have some portion of the scripture in their language in like the next three years. But more than that, because of the access of global travel and the identification of people groups, a missionary presence to every people group is like a year away. Wow. And so I'm not predicting dates, gang. I'm not making, you know, I'm not making wild statements. I'm just saying you can know, you can have a sense of, wow, we are getting really close because that very tangible promise, the gospel needs to reach all people groups, is actually about to be fulfilled. Wow. And thinking as I'm listening to you, John, about how in the latter days, the love of most will grow cold. So as lawlessness increases, love decreases and the opportunity for offense goes up exponentially. And one of the things you say that's going to be called for in the end of the age for believers is mental resilience. I want you to just talk about what that is and how we get that, because you can just see, you know, our hearts get wounded when we take the bait of offense. And, and, there, and it's, as you say, we're going to get battered. And so there's no shame in coming to Jesus saying, I'm hurt, I'm mad. I, but to let that stuff linger, and then to the point where your heart gets hard is a problem. So talk about how do we navigate such offensive times, truly, with hearts of, um, that are, you know, our head is not in the sand. We're not numbing out because we don't want to face it. We're, we're bold, we're sober, we're alert, we're pure, we're winsome, we're joyful, and we're strategic. I mean, there's we've got to somehow navigate that way. So talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So a couple really practical things. I If you binge on the news, I would strongly recommend you cut back to about three minutes a day. Hmm. Like get in, get the basics, get out. Like Love the it. human soul is actually not meant to know the news of the world. You, you, only God is omnipotent and only God is omniscient. And you just aren't meant to know every single outrage, atrocity, heartbreak. Okay. So that's going to really help you, everybody. <laughs> you cut back your news intake. Okay. But let, let's go on. So We've been talking about the human heart and how important it is to God, um, and it's it's the it's the absolute theme of the whole Scripture is is God's pursuit of the human heart. But there is this other part of us that's called the flesh or the sin life, and I just call it the self life. The self life. The self life is the part of you that gets easily offended. It's the part of you that holds resentments. It's the part of you that entertains pride. 
The self-life is a big problem. <laughs> My self-life sabotages everything, doggone it, everything. <laughs> and so what we are invited to do is to surrender the self-life to Jesus every day. And he describes it as taking up your cross every day. In other words, you you don't give the keys of the bus to the self-life, okay? And, and this, is, this is a great relief. This is a great redemption. God cares deeply about your heart, but you have a rebel within you. We all do. You, ha- you have an offended self. You, you have a part of you that holds grudges and lusts after things and holds on to envy. That part of you is not your friend. It is going to undermine your resilience. And you're going to get all caught up in this offense and the the hatred of this hour. So what I have to do every day, I do this every morning. It's Jesus, I surrender the self-life. I surrender the self-life. And then when it begins to poke its head up, you know, like in traffic, (laughs) you you just want to get so offended at people. I go, no, 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 no. I surrender the self life. I choose the life of Christ in me. And that is going to get you out of about 80% of the offense, the hatred, the envy, the grudges. This is the rescue of the cross. We have been crucified with Christ. I crucify the self life. Love that. I've been using the same term self-life for some reason, because I think of all the places, like you said, self-sabotage comes out of that place. It's either self-preservation, self-ambition, selfish greed, you know, selfish self-protection, but all these things that sabotage community and unity and trust and faith and vulnerability. So I love that so much because it's like if you get all these stored up offenses from traffic to a politician and you don't ever resolve them, guess who pays the price? You do and the people that you come Mm -hmm. in contact with. So don't you feel like it's, you know, stewarding our perspective right now has to be a full-time job. Otherwise, no one's going to ask about hope because they're not going to see any hope in us, right? Yeah. Okay. So let me give you two more practical things, gang. This is so helpful. So every morning I have in my journal uh, a little um, list of faith statements. Okay. And And some of them go like this. God is good. Always completely good. God is loving. Always completely loving. Jesus and I are deeply one, okay? The scripture tells you that. You are one with Christ now. So I I have a whole bunch of these. I need to read these out loud to myself every day, okay? Mm -hmm. Like I literally go into my office, shut the door and read these out loud because everything else is bombarding your perspective on reality. So you need to have a couple little face statements that are like taped to your refrigerator or your bathroom mirror or in the back of your journal, that you are telling yourself the truth every day. Here's another practical thing. Tune into this show. (laughs) Listen to Bible podcasts. Uh, A friend of mine, Brian Harden, has a free Bible podcast called The Daily Audio Bible, and he just reads the Bible cover to cover every year. And I've never been able to do one of those reading programs. But I'll just tune in. I'll just listen to his show. I just want someone reading the scripture to me out loud. And these are little tips, they're little helps, like cutting back the news, that helps get your mental life back into joy and perspective and and God back into the truth, because, yeah, everything else is just absolutely clamoring for your attention. Amen. Well, we're going to pause here. When we come back... We're going to talk about how to live in the now and the not yet. As John says, we're kind of living in the benefit of two ecosystems. And God wants to show us his goodness in the land of the living. We can stare at the news, as he said, the bad news, get offended by all the offenses in the world. Or we can look for the sprouts of life springing up in the here and now. And then there's eternity. We've got so much to look forward to. So how do we live in the realities of now and the not yet, and do it with a heart of hope. Talking to John Eldridge today, we're drawing from two of his books today, Resilient, Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times, and All Things New, Heaven, Earth, and the Restoration of Everything You Love. We'll be back in a minute.
Faith Radio podcasts are produced by the listener-supported ministry of Faith Radio. If you're interested in becoming a team member, a donor to this ministry, you can support the podcast anytime and donate at myfaithradio.com. I will tell of your wonders, sing of your grace. The God of creation knows me by name. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. You're listening to an encore presentation of Susie Larson Live. Thanks so much for tuning in to Suzy Larson Live, having a really great conversation today with John Eldridge, drawing from a couple of his books, All Things New, Heaven, Earth, and the Restoration of Everything You Love, and Resilient, Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times. Think about when Jesus told the disciples, it's better for you if I go away. Try to imagine how confusing that was, but it was better because the Holy Spirit was coming. And as we walk this earth and we live expectantly for the Lord's return, we have his spirit of his spirit alive in us. We've got purposes pulsating through our veins, his purpose. We've got the promises of God written overhead that are ours for the taking. And we've got a glorious eternity that awaits us. Yes, we have an enemy. Yes, we have a target on our back. And yes, we endure lots of trials and tribulations. But overwhelming victory belongs to us because we belong to him. So how do we navigate these times? Well, that's what we're talking about today. And one of the things, John, you say is that Christians are designed to live in and enjoy the benefits of two ecosystems, two realities, the physical and the spiritual, the earth and the heavens. That's a complex idea, but I know you make things simple. So unpack that if you would. Oh, I wish I wish everybody could go snorkeling right now. Because <laughs> we this would get clear in about 10 seconds. I remember the first time I went snorkeling, you know, you put on the mask, the little breathing tube, you stick your head under the water, and whoa, all of a sudden, here's this whole world that is right there. And it's so beautiful. It's coral and reef and fish or just the beauty of the ocean. And then you look up and you go, oh, yeah, there's the world I know. And you look down, and you're like, what? Like right mm. there is the rest of God's beautiful kingdom. That's what it's like to live in the kingdom of God. And so I think what I want to say, gang, like how do you live in the now and the not yet? We need daily experiences of the presence of God. Daily experiences. Give us this day our daily bread, right? Give us this day our daily bread. Well, I think we need to connect that verse to when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And if you read the stories of the saints down through the ages, you pay particular attention to people who have gone through great suffering. They say crazy stuff like my friend who is dying of cancer says, I actually wouldn't trade this cancer because of what it's taught me about God. Like there is, please hear me, there is an experience of the presence and the nourishment of Jesus that is our daily bread, that, that does comfort and heal and restore and strengthen. This is biblical resilience. It, it, it is the nourishment of our daily bread in Christ. And, and as we explore that, as we experience that, as we have more and more experiences of Jesus, then he's able to guide us through this dangerous world, yes, to absolutely beautiful things. All, all the stories that, that our family could tell over the years where God has brought these lovely, lovely moments, these joyful evenings, these gifts and surprises, simply because we asked. Just say, what do you have for me this year, Lord? Okay, you ask him, what do you have? What do you have for our family this year? What do you have for us? And, and it is as we allow our shepherd to guide us through these troubled times, first with the daily bread, the daily experience of his nourishing presence. And Jesus will bring you all kinds of really playful, beautiful things if you allow yourself to experience him and his kingdom. And let me give an example of this. So one of the, back to kind of the Matthew 24 
uh, passage, one of the phenomenal things going on in the world right now is the thousands of conversions taking place in the Islamic world. Mm -hmm. And most of them are taking place through direct encounters with Jesus Christ. He is literally just walking into people's bedrooms. He's coming into their dreams. He's giving them visions and they're coming to salvation in Christ. So a friend of mine who's a missionary just told me a recent story of a Muslim woman in an Arabic country who met Jesus in her dreams. He gave her the cell phone number of a priest to call. She calls this cell phone number. I kid you not. This is a true story. She calls this number and she meets this priest who's able to help her upload a Bible app to her phone. So she's got the scriptures in a country where they don't have the scriptures. He baptizes her over the phone. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus is like that, gang. He's very real. He's very here. He's very now. And to be an amphibian is to open yourself up to, you know what? I actually need more experiences of God. I need more daily bread. So good. I love this. You said, if you've ever experienced the comfort of God or the love of God, that was heaven coming to you here on earth. If you've had the joy of hearing Jesus speak to you, if he brings you scriptures, songs, things that stir your heart, that's heaven coming into your natural world. And there's so much more to discover. The reason that's just so important is because we settle into the land of the shadows. We lose expectancy. We try expectation. We try to tell God what he should do for us. And when he doesn't you know, jump through our hoops, we give up on altogether. But expectancy is that sense that he's moving, that he's good, and he wants to do something in our world. We just got a few minutes left. And at some point, if there's time, I want to read out of All Things New. I quoted this in my book, Fully Alive, uh, what the homecoming, what you want your homecoming to be like. And But say a word, if you would, about heavenly rewards, because you said God seems to be of the opinion that no one should be expected to sustain the rigors of the Christian life without a very robust and concrete hope of being brazenly rewarded for it. Now, yes, yes, there is a place for altruism, no doubt about it. It, but we have in our pride or in our poverty let a false humility creep in. So just say a word about that joyful expectancy. It's really fascinating, gang. If you read the saints in scripture, and if you read the saints down through history, most of them were really actually expecting all kinds of wonderful reward. They talk about it, they pray for it, they, they it's built into their hope folder. I because don't know it's in anyone. Scripture. I don't know anyone who is. It's just astounding. There's this moment in history where, I don't know, somehow we've lost it. So let me just let me just tell you, dear ones, all of your hidden choices to forgive that neighbor, to love your irritable boss, to yeah, care for the needy one more time. All those choices, gang, you are seen. Your life is seen and you are going to be so celebrated, so recompensed. Your story is going to be told rightly one day. And with it, there's just going to be this glorious amount of reward that's coming to you. Not that far away. We, you know, yeah. I don't even like the word eternity anymore. I just want to say not that far from now. Yeah. Any day now. <laughs> Any day let, let me read this because it's so stinking good, and um, we'll see what kind of time we have left. This is from John Eldridge's book, All Things New. And he says, uh, he says, what would you love your reception into the kingdom to be? You should put some words to that, given how important it is. A friend of mine who's labored long in the great war with evil shared his vision with me in a moment of tender vulnerability. His friend said, I want to finish well. I want to return as a hero, a warrior worthy of the kingdom. I had this vision. I don't know if it was an actual vision or just my heart's expression. I saw myself, sword at my side, shield slung over my back, making my way up the main street of the city. I wore the battle gear of war, soiled by long years at the front. People lined both sides of the street to welcome me, the great cloud, I guess. I recognized hundreds of faces, the faces of those whose freedom I fought for. Their smiles and tears filled my heart with profound joy. As I made my way up the street toward Jesus and our Father, my friends and fellow warriors stepped into the street with me. We moved forward as a band. I saw angels there, maybe the angels who fought for and with us, walking alongside. I saw flower petals on the pavement. I saw banners flapping in the breeze. We reached the throne and knelt. 
Jesus came forward and kissed my forehead, and we embraced deeply and freely, like I always knew we would. Then my father stepped forward and took me by the shoulders and said, Well done, my son. Very well done indeed. Welcome home. As we embraced, a great cheer went up from the crowd. And then John writes, Now that would be a reception worth living for. The reality that every story will be told rightly should affect your choices today. If there's no cost to our Christian faith, how then shall we be rewarded? And may I point out that if we, too, would love to receive a hero's welcome, it helps to keep in mind that valiant deeds require desperate times. The desperate desperate times are all around us, friends. Now for the valiant deeds. Brilliant. John, we love you. Thank you for stewarding faith and all you've done for the kingdom. We honor your gift and thank you for the time today. Oh, this has been delightful, Susie. Back back to you, dear one, dear friend mm-hmm. of God. Yeah, and bless you all who've been listening today. Bless you. It's all true. It's all Amen. true. Amen. Come on. Amen. Well, I pray you found some encouragement here today. I know my soul's filled back up. We love you. We're praying for you. We're walking this out together, and we'll meet you back here next time. Thank you for listening to this conversation from Suzy Larson Live. These conversations are available because of your support. You can become a supporter now at MyFaithRadio.com. Please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes and then share it with friends so together we can all have a deeper life in Christ.